and it's a cray. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome to my first vlog. For my first video, I wanted to talk about me and what I'm going through, my journey about kidney failure and you know going through the transition of uh, being a dialysis patient. So I wanna take you guys one by one throughout the journey from day one. Um, so it happened in 2018. Um, I just had migraines and then eventually became too much for me that I was puking every day and I had to be admitted to the, um, the emergency unit of St. Louis Hospital in the Philippines. There we went through a series of tests. I went through MRI because I thought I had aneurysm basically because it was just, my head was just pounding and I couldn't eat anymore because I would just, I would be in so much pain that I would be puking everything that I would in, um, ingest. And then we found out after two weeks of staying in the hospital that I might have some kidney related issues. And since I have IgA nephropathy, since I was 16, they were very careful. My creatinine was so high, but I had no symptoms. But after two weeks of my stay in the hospital, that's when we had to go for a biopsy. And while I was going through the biopsy, a lot of people were talking about what was happening to me. There were a lot of speculations that I have, um, you know, chronic kidney disease. Um, there were a lot of news talking about my health, but I really had no answer because I, I, we didn't know. My doctors and I, uh, we have no idea what's happening until after the biopsy. And then that's when my world came crashing down. Hi guys, so I just had a meltdown. Um, so my second opinion turned out to be a confirmation. I will be needing a transplant and so I have to fly to um, Canada because my brother and my sister will be there my mom too and they could be my potential donors today was my doctor's visit in um, Toro University one of the best kidney doctors were there and immediately she said go get a transplant let's just hope you know it's Canada's gonna bring me more positive news but so far, it's not positive. It was the start of um, uh, my journey, basically, and we found out uh, my kidneys were failing. My kidneys were functioning for 15% only, and that I will be needing um, either a dialysis or kidney transplant ASAP. Obviously, I was 28 years old. I had my life full of you know promises. I didn't believe it. So um, I went to Japan to get a second opinion and basically that's what happened. When we found out that my kidneys were um, slow or it was I was going through kidney failure, um, my doctors and I have worked out a plan to see if we can reverse it. So we've decided to change my diet like in an instant like this, I became a vegan. And on top of being a vegan, I wasn't allowed to eat a few more veggies, veggies. So I was only allowed to eat like greens, like leaves, no dressing, no salt, no nothing. Basically, it was just rice. So um, I found myself eating just plain rice or like fried rice with no salt or anything in it, but just pure veggies. I think a lot of of, of kidney related issues patients knows that there's a few vegetables that are very high in in some things that we're not allowed to eat so it was really hard for me because i am i love food i love food but i had to give it up because i love my body more and i want to live so it was just really hard because i have to give up a lot of what i really love 
in, in an instant. But um, I'm just very lucky that the people that I live with are very supportive of me. Like my boyfriend, my cousins, and 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 uh, my housekeeper. So it was just a journey, and um, my medications was a lot. <laughs> so this is my 6 p.m. and this is my 8 p.m. <laughs> so we're trying as much as we can organize it. In the video that I showed, it was it was just a, probably it was just for two weeks that was just the medications for two weeks and because i had to stop a lot of food i had to consume medications that will help my body basically sustain the energy and, and everything so but then when i moved to canada it was a different story during my biopsy my my boyfriend was late. Um, he was actually allowed to come inside the room by my doctor, uh, by my doctor, uh, Dr. Cabral, and came in late. I was already, I think I was already being ad, uh, being injected with, um, you know, like to calm me down and to make me sleep or half asleep. And I don't know what they injected in me, but I started hallucinating and talking nonsense. Um, he didn't really. Took a video right away about my hallucinations but i was basically telling my doctors to sell me the drug that made me hallucinate pretty much i was really high when you're uh, going through kidney failure kid your bp is super high or super low mine was extra high um i think i was going every day it was 160 over 120 or 180 to 120 around there which was very alarming and my family members were like freaking out. But before that, my during my biopsy, I was telling my doctors to sell me the drug and while they were doing the BP on me, I was like, oh my God, it's a snake. It's a snake in my arms. And then everybody was laughing while they were injecting me with this big ass injection, like pretty much this big of an injection, the needles this big going through my back I wasn't even I wasn't even feeling anything I was just like high out of my mind and then in the middle of that while the doctor was injecting it and like taking a piece of my kidney my boyfriend Mark decided to turn off the lights because he he went, he went like this and the light went off and everyone's like oh but it was just a funny moment you know before that was been before we found out what was happening to me so it was like a happy, happy experience during the biopsy when it was my second biopsy, but basically it was, it was better than the first one. And, and I had to pee in a diaper, which was a really weird feeling. Um, there was two choices. It was either pee in a diaper or you pee in that tin, tin, like call it arenola or like a tin pee bottle or pee, something. I don't, I can't pee. And, and, uh, and with a nurse standing there and, and going through my my butt or the JJ. So I was like, just put a diaper on me, but I couldn't do it. And I was like, yeah, just put a diaper on me. So yeah, it was it was a funny experience that I will never forget. Um, out of everything that happened to me, that was, I guess, the highlight of wearing a diaper and being with the nurse and the doctors waiting. <laughs> Because um, I guess after they administer the drug, they make you pee just to make sure your kidneys are okay. So yeah, that was a funny story. <laughs> Looking back at the video diary that I did, uh, it was, I remember it fully, the emotions that I was going through that day in that time. Um, it was really sad, depressing and scary. All at the same time it was just an overwhelming feeling and on top of that I just lost one of my closest um, friend mentor in Iloilo uh, Tito Alex and he he had um, a heart attack and a kidney failure as well and he died and I was so scared that I will die too because he was very young. I mean, 
he's like about my mom's age and we were really close and I was just with him a year before that so um it made me realize how short life was and how important it is to live by the moment to live your life fully to experience happiness to the fullest to tell your loved ones how much you love them how much that you mean to them and everything was just crashing down and i have so much to do but i had no more time basically and just like what the video it just came so quick and it was so fast that i felt like my life was ending it was just an overwhelming uh, moment that i was so scared i am going to canada tomorrow and um i'm excited to see my family but i'm scared I don't know what to expect. What if none of them's my donor? I guess I'm one of the lucky ones that I am Canadian and I get free health care. But if my family members, my sister, my brother, my mom, or my boyfriend's not my donor, I'll be on the waiting list. And I don't know if I can sleep tonight. My eyes are tired. I'm so sleepy, but I can't stop thinking about the flight, how I'm gonna do it. And when I get home to see my family, how will I explain to them that I will be needing their kidney? I feel sad because I'm the older sister. I'm supposed to be the one taking care of them, not the other way around. So when we arrived in Toronto, um, yeah, I was just very lucky that my boyfriend joined me um, and dropping me off to my family. So we went to Service Ontario and then I almost fainted. Uh, I couldn't stand for too long anymore that I had to be admitted to the emergency and then I just stayed in the hospital for two weeks and at first it was a little bit of observation from the doctors because they couldn't understand how a young person like me who's living a healthy lifestyle ended up with kidney failure and then they found you know I have to tell them that you know I, um, I have a history of IgA nephropathy when I was 16 I had stage one and but then they had remission and then I didn't I didn't take care of my body. I didn't go to the hospitals and, and get tests for my IgA. So eventually I just went on um, stage four and renal failure. So it was really hard to explain to my mom, to my siblings about my kidney um, issues because I felt ashamed because for the longest time my mom asked me to come home and get checked but I didn't <laughs> and it took me how many years before I really came home and collapsed her to her arms and so my mom felt guilty that she didn't do enough and I felt guilty that I didn't I didn't come home to get tested so when I started doing dialysis the first dialysis was the hardest so just in case nobody knows what dialysis is dialysis is an artificial kidney of mine <laughs> so what they're doing is they're getting my blood and cleaning it in a process i will be getting my own machine yay but i have to be trained um this is just temporarily because i will be getting a transplant so I have four donors my friend Leo my boyfriend Mark <laughs> my mom and my brother so I have four people and um, really hoping one of them is gonna be my donor it was so many people were asking me if it's painful if it's um, 
how did I feel? Did I feel fainty? Was I crying? Um, I was crying, all right. <laughs> Not crying like an ugly cry. It was more of a, a really sad, overwhelming cry. I remember. And I was alone when I was wheeled down to the whole new department. And then um, when I saw my blood coming out of my body and going through the machine, that's when it kind of hit me emotionally that, you know, I am not, a, I'm not, I'm not in control of my body anymore and that it's real life. This is real life, it's really happening, and so everything came down. And, and as I was like getting cleaned, I was also releasing all these emotions. And I had to ask my boyfriend to come, and I was crying, and it was just a, a, a very surreal moment. And all the nurses in that um, clinic knows what I'm feeling because I was the youngest. I was the youngest in, in, in that wing, in that dialysis unit, so they understand what I'm going through and it took me a long time, until now, uh, I, still, I still cry about it, thinking of how, but then I think about how strong I am to really endure and, and to go through it, because um, I feel like if I was a little bit older, it was probably harder my body would probably take it differently because my body right now is fighting and, and and it's cooperating and and my organs are actually apart from kidneys they're doing well and they're pretty healthy and it's just the kidneys it just makes me because before i felt like oh, it's indestructible because i'm young i can do whatever i want and but then after the kidney issues i basically had a shift mind and my life and my whole people around me my friends my family my my supporters we all kind of had a realization that no matter who you are no matter what you do no matter what your age is you can be affected if you don't take your if you don't take care of your health you can get sick <laughs> so i'm doing this video vlogging i'm doing i'm showing you guys because i want to showcase i want to put a light on being healthy and taking care of yourself not just physically but mentally as well because it's very important because i really believe that my iga um got worse because i was in a lot of stress just because i was overthinking i was I was trying to be an overachiever. I wanted to be someone, I wanted to be something before I'm 30. But then I realized I just want to be alive before I'm 30. I just want to have children. I just want to be with my family. I just want to travel the world before I, I'm 30. So I'm doing this because I want to show to the world to be grateful, to live to be happy, to just appreciate life as much as you can because life is short and life have a lot of surprises and you never know. So I really, really want the people to, who's watching this video to don't take life for granted and, and, and love as much as you can and share as much as you can and live, live life to the fullest before it's too late. <laughs> oh, you're so heavy. A oh, lot. <laughs> Wait, I need to cry. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with nothing. Now.